20 years ago, today's guest burst on the Broadway scene with a performance that still burns in my mind today. The role was Kim and Miss Saigon, and the actress was, of course, the fabulous Leia Salonga. Welcome, Leia. Thank you. How are you? I'm well, thank you very much. It's good to see you in New York. <sighs> it's good to see me in New York. I'm happy <laughs> to be here. So, uh, I want to start right off the bat. I, it occurred to me while I was getting ready for you coming here that 20 years ago, that this, was, this, this Tony Award was... It was ju just a little over 20 years ago. Right. We opened at the Broadway Theater, where Sister Act is now playing. Right. We opened at the Broadway Theater on April 11, 2000, uh, 2000 no, <laughs> April 11, 1991. Right, and so and 20 Tony Awards ago, yeah. you won. And I won. So did you watch this year's Tonys? Do you I still... did, of course I did. I mean, come on, you can't... You can't be in New York and miss out on what is like the Super Bowl for theater. It's like, <laughs> it's like you have your you have your you have your junk food in front of you. You've got your friends and and we're screaming and we're clapping. It, the performances were awesome. And but this is the Leia Salonga like, review. I want this the is review. The, like the Leia Salonga review on Broadway.com. <laughs> um, like the the blow by blow account. I love Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah. I love how he started it. He's like, good evening, this is Teen Heartthrob, Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> and I love the opening song, the It's Not Just For Gays Anymore. Right. Oh my God. Good stuff. We just, I was just, I think I spent most of that opening number laughing my head off. And then just when you think it couldn't get better than that, it does the moment Hugh Jackman appears. Yeah, great to us. One, I love Hugh Jackman when he's not in Wolverine mode. I mean, I love him as Wolverine, but <laughs> when he's not Wolverine, I love him even more. When he's being the musical theater, charming, yeah. handsome, yeah. masculine leading man. And when he gets up there and sings in a tux and he dances and he launches and he and Neil launch into chorus line choreography, it's like, yes! So you're really yeah, a it's super like the fan. Super Bowl at my house. You're a super fan. You're a Broadway super fan. I'm a Broadway super fan. I'm a Tony Awards Broadway super fan. So it's like screaming and fist pumps and, and that kind of thing <laughs> that happens in my living room that normally happen when a bunch of guys get around right. the TV for Super Bowl. I have me, some girlfriends, gay friends come over and it's and we are fist pumping at the Tony Awards. It's <laughs> it's it's awesome. This is our Super Bowl. So looking back on the 20 year ago, 20 years ago moment, which I just watched on YouTube right before you got here. <laughs> I reminded myself and saw the very poised 20 year old girl accepting yeah, it's her like way more serious than than I am now. I think I'm growing up backwards. It's funny because I used to think of you as extremely serious. Right. But then whenever I've had an interaction with you, you're not. No, I'm not. So people people have this perception of you. I guess it's yeah. because you were so poised and young and taking on this monster role at such mm -hmm. a young age and a dramatic role. It's a dramatic role, but I think the poise probably comes from the fact that if you think about it, I had been doing that role for nearly two years right. at by the time we finally opened on Broadway. But what was that like when they called your name and you went up there and... It was, it was crazy. And, and I think because of the climate in which Miss Saigon, you know, came out and there was a whole big backlash, there right. were so many rallies and demonstrations the controversy. Um, against the show and there was so much controversy surrounding Jonathan Price's casting and so when it finally did come and, and you know, we, we all kind of knew that it wasn't going to be a major, you know, awards baby. It was a very popular hit and in, with a huge box office advance. Um, however, I think a lot of us had this feeling of it's not going to win Best Musical at the Tony Awards. It's not going to win all of these other things that we might expect a musical of that kind right. to, to just, you know, kind of get by default. In, you know, kind of like this year, oh yeah, Book of Mormon's going to win, oh yeah, this is going to get this, this person's going to yeah. get that. And in our case, I don't think it was. And we just, we just really didn't know. We, we hoped for the best, but we were expecting the worst. They went with the All-American Will Rogers Follies. Yes, they did. Right. But you did win, and uh, very well yeah. deserved. I mean, Thank you. incredible performance. Thank the you. The many times I've seen you do it. How many times did you see it? I probably saw you do it four or five times. Oh I think my. I saw the, the final week on Broadway. Yes, incredible. in 2001. Oh, that's right, yeah. That was a month before, we closed the show, it was a month before I turned 30. And I promised myself, okay, once I turn 30, there's absolutely no way that I right. will be ever doing, that I'll ever, I will ever do this role again. I mean, I opened it at 18, closed it at 29. It's like, you know what, I gotta leave it. It's, and you, it is time to let it go. And you recently just turned 40. Yeah. How'd that go? What'd you do on your birthday? My husband surprised me with a party. Oh, nice. I know, it was a really nice party too. And he planned it with a couple of my best friends who are also theater actors and directors. And um, 
Your husband's a yes. businessman. My husband is actually in media, so he, okay. he's kind of in the business, but not in the he's, business. So okay. we don't compete. We're not in the same field. Right, right. He's not an actor. Yay. Right. Um, well, you've been down that road. <laughs> I've been down that road. Right. And, and now you're on a different road. Yes, it's on a different <laughs> road. Um, but yeah, so he held a party, and a lot of my friends were there, and I did not expect this, uh. you know. And, and I walk in, and there's balloons, and then there's uh. a cake, and then there's all this food laid out, and here's like, a lot of people who are close to me saying, surprise! And I looked a mess. And I, I looked at the <laughs> photographs, I'm like, if I had known, I would have put makeup on. <laughs> and, but it was, it was really, really fun. So your goal for your 30s was to not do Miss Saigon anymore. What was your goal for your 40s? Um, to still, I, I think, one, to still be able to actually sing the score, because whenever I do concerts, it is a request to The last time I saw you in concert, stuff. Yeah. you sang, I would give my life to you, yeah, for I you. Yeah, I give my life for you. Right. And that, is that still part of your show at the Carlisle? It's, no, actually. There's no Miss Saigon. There is no Les Mis in my show at wow. the Carlisle this time. There is some flower drum song, though. OK. So okay. there's a couple of the songs, but kind of not in the way expected. Well, okay. Love Look Away is pretty much sung straight. Right. We just, just sing the just one go around, and, and that's it. Um, I enjoy being a girl, though. It's kind of mashed up with, um, with a, a a not so well known song from a Disney live action film. And oh. I can't remember what the name was, but it had Summer in the title and Haley Mills was starring in it. And it's called Femininity. So it's uh, okay. interesting. Okay. Oh, it's pretty interesting. It's one of my favorite numbers in the show. So you're appearing at Cafe Carlisle yep, through until June 25th. June the 25th. Right. And this is a return engagement. I was there in March of 2010. And now I'm here in June. And, and it's called New York in June, and I do sing the song from which that line right. um, comes from. So it's you obviously know how to fill very large theaters with your voice. What's it like playing a really small room? It actually takes a bit of the pressure off. You don't have to slam your voice to the back wall, yeah. you know. And in, in a big venue, it's there's a little bit of pressure to try and fill as much as you can, and you're basically very naked mm -hmm. up in a room like that where. You have about 75, 80, 90 people, very, very close to you. Um, it's like performing a magic trick where everybody can see how the magic is happening. <laughs> and your, your task is how to make it still be magical and ah. for the audience. So it's an interesting. I've never heard it described like that. That's, that's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. So I mean, everybody can, they can see you singing. There's, there's, you know, there's no smoke and mirrors. They, they can see everything. So how do you make it still be uh, an experience that they can take home and, and hopefully remember? And you've done a lot of concerts. You do a lot of concerts. I do you, a lot of concerts every year, yeah. I saw you at a concert uh, maybe a couple years ago in Terrytown. Yeah. And, and you sang, and I loved when you pulled up someone from the audience for A Whole New World. Yeah. <laughs> that was like one of your things you always I did. I love right? doing that because you just never know what you're going to get. <laughs> with, with each one, sometimes you'll get somebody who sounds like he could be a professional singer on Broadway. Yeah, that's what I got. Um, I got someone who was very, very you know? pulled together. And then you can get people who have absolutely no business being up on a stage. <laughs> and you'll have somebody who's just so off-key. I mean, you'll be in Manhattan. Their voice is in Jersey. It's, it, it's, it can be that bad. But sometimes even when it's so bad... It is so good. <laughs> Were there any like really hilarious? <laughs> oh things yeah, you could think there of? was one guy in Vegas. I did a concert. It was my first concert out in Vegas. My husband and members, other members of my family, came to see it. And my husband was sitting in the balcony, or pretty much in the back of the, yeah. of the orchestra section. This guy was so nervous. My husband in the back could be like, "Honey, he was so nervous. The paper was shaking, you know." Because <laughs> I, I, I give them a lyric sheet. Right. Sometimes they need it. Sometimes they don't. But this guy was visibly just. And, and I think he started off in the wrong key. He started an octave higher than he should have. It just made for a very, very <laughs> funny evening. And I think it's the bad ones I tend to remember the most. <laughs> is it fun, though, to sing with your fans like that? It is. It's a lot of fun. And there are a lot of people that know that it's going to happen. And there are people that actually come prepared. Yeah. In the Philippines, you've done a lot of great roles. I mean, your, your theater resume, it makes me very jealous that I haven't been there to see a lot of those <laughs> things. Yeah. What, what, are some of the, what are some of the roles you're sort of most proud of that you've done over there? Um, quite a bit. There's having done My Fair Lady over there, having done Into the Woods in Singapore, 
having done their playing our song and and doing the kind of stuff that I normally would not be even thought of. That's what I want to talk here. to you about. Yeah, do you do you feel like you have a hard time getting people to see you for things like that here? Um, unless you're Cameron McIntosh, the answer would be yes. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, I've I've not gotten seen because I'm Asian. I mean, I've gotten the agent will call me on the phone and say they're not going to see you because you're Asian, and they right. can't see you in, you know, doing this role or doing that role, and it's. And it's kind of sad, you know, because there's a lot of people of, of so many different ethnicities who have these big, bombastic, perfect for Broadway voices, but are not given a break. Right. Simply because, well, you don't fit the role. Mm -hmm. So to be cast as a Benin and Les and then later on as Fontaine, I'm grateful because in another universe, I don't think I would be seen for that if it wasn't Cameron producing it and if he didn't have as much faith as he did. Let's say we're, we're gonna drop you into a show on Broadway. What role would you like to do? I'd like to do Poppins, actually. That would be oh. fun. I mean, I don't tap dance, but I'd love to learn how just to do that part. And I think the thrill of flying above an audience uh -huh. every day, that must be wild. That must be crazy wild. All right, so let's do, let's, let's do Mary Poppins. Let's, let's do Mary Poppins, that'd be fine. <laughs> I would love that. Maybe I'll wait until my daughter's old enough to play Jane. <laughs> Maybe. Well, you've talked in the past about, uh, because I've read it in the Filipino newspapers, and there are a lot, there's a lot of stories about you and your daughter, but I read about, you said, if, if your daughter wanted to perform. I wouldn't would stop her, certainly. Right, you wouldn't stop her. You know, but I'm, I'm not gonna drag her into this business simply because she's my daughter, and that's an unfair expectation to put upon her. Um, that said, though, if she wants to do this, and if she really has something special, then I'm not gonna stop her. If this is her destiny, if this is what she truly wants to do, then great, but if she wants to be a painter, if she wants to be in visual arts, if she wants to be a dancer, if she wants to be a doctor, I mean, mm -hmm. I can only steer her in the direction where her aptitude is is right. telling me to steer her right. into. Right. Yeah, that's that's all I can do, you know. Is that what happened with you and your mom? I think yeah, I think I was displaying something and that's kind of where I got steered into. Uh -huh. So I'm I'm grateful that, you know, my mom didn't try to dissuade me from doing this. Right. That it, it turned out to be the best decision to say yes to doing Miss Saigon and, and you know, because the world all of a sudden opened up to all these opportunities. Right. I yeah. want to ask you sort of a random question. What do you think of Charisse? She's wonderful. She, she's from the Philippines. She's from the Philippines. And, and yes, we proudly own her. <laughs> <laughs> we will proudly own her. And, and, you know, obviously none of us can take any credit for, for her talent and for her ability and for her skill. That's really just hers and her mom's and her family's yeah. and, and everybody that's trained her and taught her to do what she does. But you have an entire country who is just proud of this of this young woman. I mean, she's been on Glee. I mean, she's doing concerts. She's toured the country with David Foster. I mean, she's got the whole world open to her. It's, it it's pretty damn bit, awesome. When you were that age, I mean, you were getting yeah, that kind I was of that age, yeah. yeah. So oh have, you, have you met her? Oh yeah, and okay. we've actually sung together a couple times. Oh, she's okay. just amazing, amazing okay. singer and amazing musicality. So. She has no problems getting to where she wants to go. So should She'll we do just fine. So maybe you should like play her mom on Glee or something. Well, that's really up to the people at Glee. That works. I think that works. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. It's not up to me. <laughs> I'll bet you like Glee. I, would, I love Glee. Yeah. Well, there's a half Filipino in the show who, is, who has just kind of burst out, Darren Chris. Yeah. I adore him and I adore his character. <laughs> I'm a huge Clean fan. I'm a huge Clean fan. Uh -huh. You know, I'm just big on the on that on that pair. Yeah, we're all waiting for Darren Chris to come to Broadway. Oh yeah, it seems that like would be nice. Natural this, this would be nice for him to do. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's doing the singer songwriter thing now. So, Maybe but he's he done. He's written musicals, so he may just he may get to Broadway as a writer. Mm, as a writer, not as a performer. Maybe he should be your Bert in Mary Poppins. That would be fun. Does he tap? I don't know that he does. <laughs> you can learn together. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun, and he's such a lovely, lovely young man. And we email each other and tweet each other from time to time, and just, just nice and a good guy, and incredibly joyful and, and grateful for the opportunities you know that come his way. Hopefully, we will see you on Broadway very soon in a new musical called Allegiance, mm -hmm. which I know that you've been working on for a few years in yeah. readings and. And I hear it's a beautiful, beautiful story. Oh, a lot of the music is just gorgeous. What I know about it is that it's set 
It's set uh, in World War II. In the 40s, and it's about a Japanese yeah. camp. Right. It's in, about in a US. Japanese internment camp called Heart Mountain in Wyoming. And it really starts out with this Japanese family before the bombing of Pearl Harbor. On December 7, 1941, everything changes for the Japanese American community, and everyone is basically rounded up and placed in different concentration camps in all over the West Coast. Which is a history I knew very little about. Right, and it's a history horrifying. that very, a lot of people know very little about. Yeah. Um, unless, of course, you are a descendant of, of one of these families that right. was interned. And George Takei, who has been part of, of this project from the very, very beginning, and everybody knows him as a Hikaru Sulu in Star Trek. Oh, my. With, oh, my. Oh and he's my. got that voice. I know from the Howard Stern show. And from the Howard Stern show. <laughs> and he's... He was himself an internee at a young age, yeah. and his father was sent to Tule Lake, and I think his father was one of the ones who was dissenting mm -hmm. um, or showing signs of rebellion against, you know, against what was going on in the camps. And it's interesting. There was, a, there was also the 442nd, which is a, an all-Japanese unit in World War II, where they go on the most dangerous missions, practically suicidal. Um, there were those who volunteered for the 442nd readily, and there were a lot of those young men who, who were going against it, saying, well, you've taken our rights as Americans away. Why should we enlist in a unit? You're forcing us to do this as Americans when we do no longer have our rights as Americans. So you see this family where here's the one son that signs up, and here's another one who is for this movement, and, but the father is like, well, our rights have been taken away. So he's with the underground movement, you know, trying to you know, trying to change the minds of people in the camp. So it's very interesting. And how do you fit into this I fit family? in because I am, George has a younger self, which is who's played by Telly Leung, who was also on Glee. And Telly is one of the most ridiculously talented young artists to ever grace Broadway. I was around for his Broadway debut, actually. We did Flower Drum Song together. Right, so right. he was fresh out of college and in a Broadway show. Um, He's one of the warblers. He was one of the with, warblers with, with Darren, with, Chris. With Darren right. Chris. So it was, it was always his role for me to see Tally Ongli. Um <laughs> So yeah, so I play his character's Japanese tutor, and it's and I also play the character that falls in love with his older brother. Mm. And in this workshop, he's going to be played by Jose Lana. So I get I get I get Another to be paired friend. with Jose Lana again after Flower Drum. So it's kind of a nice <laughs> little reunion. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Hopefully we'll see it on Broadway. I'm hoping. I mean, it's, it's produced by the Old Globe, so I think it heads to the Old Globe Theater in San Diego first. Okay. And after that production, then if all goes well, then so hopefully you'll definitely be doing it at the Old Globe. Mm-hmm. Great. You know, great. barring all unforeseen circumstances, I will be at the Old Globe. Wonderful. So I have to ask you something. I recently, I heard you're a video game freak. This has oh, been yeah. written about before. I just bought my first uh, video game station. I bought a PlayStation 3. Okay. So I need to know which games I should be playing. I have an Xbox. Oh. So, uh, yeah. That was a big No, no, debate. no. No, however, there are a lot of games that, are, that are available games. for both. Right. Um, so what do you like? What do you, what well, are you doing? Well, I, I, I was a huge, I was huge on Final Fantasy 13, which should be available uh -huh. for okay. the PS3. Uh -huh. um, Heavenly Sword is really good. Do you, you go around and shoot up people and slash? No, this is like this is like a sword play. Okay, so you, so you cut people up. You cut people up and it's bloody and it's awesome. Uh, Bioshock, Bioshock 2, if I don't know what other games are available. If that's available for PS3, then get those, but do not play them at night. Why, what happened? It's pretty scary. Because <laughs> things just jump out at you, like all of a sudden here's like a, a, a zombie right behind you and you can hear that it's behind you and if you have surround sound, that'll creep you out even more because then you're surrounded by you were in a city that's underwater, and here's a thing wielding a wrench, ready to hit you, so you have to turn around real quick, and you got to hit him first. Or you shoot him down with a machine gun, or a revolver, or a shotgun. And it's... I love thinking of you. I love that you. kind of thing. I love thinking of you in the middle no, of the No, you know night. what? That was extremely therapeutic when I was doing Les Mis as Fontaine, because sometimes you just can't get a lot of those dark thoughts out of your head. And I'll be sitting there in my apartment, <laughs> in bed, at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, you know what? I gotta kill something right now. <laughs> so I turn on like video game and I turn on the TV and by 5 a.m. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm good. Turn everything off, lights That's out, awesome. go to sleep. Yeah, so to the creators of Bioshock, thank you so much. You have made my life so much better. 
by killing zombie butt. By Lance killing Alonga's zombie killing butt, zombie by butt. killing rap, by, yeah. <laughs> by killing splicer butt, yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> That's great. Maybe you should do a video game musical. Maybe there's some sort of uh, adaptation. I know. Bioshock the musical. That would be funny. <laughs> no, I don't think it, it won't be done. In our minds, totally. Yeah. Well, until we get to see that uh, pulled off, starring Leia Salonga, we will concentrate on your Cafe Carlisle gig. Yes. Through Much June more simple. 25th. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody should go check it out because yeah. it's, it's one of the Tuesdays best Tuesdays to Saturdays. Two, two, two shows on Saturday. We're dark Sunday. We're dark Monday. Well, you are one of my favorite Thank uh, talents. You. Thank and, you. Um, I hope we see you on Broadway very soon. Yeah. I Allegiance, hope I see you on Broadway soon, too. Or Mary Poppins, or <laughs> Killing Zombie Butt. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, Leah. Thank you, Leia. Paul. Great to see you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.